Hello everyone, it's Alice here with the Renovation Planner and you are in the right place if you are looking to learn how to plan a home renovation quickly and efficiently. And I'm going to share with you how I do it and you can take from it and hopefully implement it into your own practice. <clears throat> Whether you are a homeowner, a realtor, an investor, or if you are a designer that does this for other clients, this is something that I hear all the time that renovation can be so daunting, they're not sure where to start, um, and how to make sure that all of the moving parts are addressed and taken care of, and I am going to share with you how I do it, and I've been doing it for the last 16 years um, for all sorts of clients, for myself, for staging clients, for resale, for realtors, for clients that are um, selling their homes, for people who are living in their homes, they might have bought a fixer-upper. I am here in the San Francisco Bay Area. There's not a whole lot of um, new home construction compared to older homes. And so a lot of times you buy an older property and you need to renovate it to suit your taste and to suit your lifestyle. I am working on a property that just recently got purchased. It was actually purchased uh, at foreclosure auction last Thursday. So literally what's today, Tuesday. It hasn't even been a week yet. But the slated move-in date for this particular property is May 1st. So as you know, we are currently at, what is this? March 19th, Tuesday, March 19th. And I will show you the calendar. So if we are here, I'm trying to position this properly, we are here at March 19th, and our move-in date is here, okay? So that is in six short weeks, and we don't even have the keys yet. And so how are we going to plan this and make sure that we're able to move in at on the planned date? I will show you that. Um, there's a lot that, of planning in advance that needs to be done, and I think that is the most important part. Too many times people are jumping into a renovation, haven't really thought it through, haven't really thought about exactly what all is required to create that, success, that successful result, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to share my screen. I've never done this before, so I'm hoping, oh darn. Why isn't it giving me an option now to show the screen? It should, um, I wanted to show you photos of the property, but I'm not sure that it's going to let me now that I'm going live and I am showing you my face, um, which, you know, to each their own, it may or may not be important, um, but it may not work out. So let me see if I can show you what I have planned um, on the screen here. We're gonna roll with it because that's how it works. So the best thing to do is to walk through your property room by room. And I recommend starting from the front door. So what I've always done with clients is we start from the front door, we walk in and we go through room by room and we are going to outline everything that needs to be done. So, for instance, in this particular case, let's see, I can pull it up on my phone and I can show you. What needs to be done, so we will walk through the property and I have outlined what needs to be done in this particular property, we are going to I'm going to show you. Let's see if I can position this right. So here is the living room. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna, we already know we're gonna repaint all the walls, the doors and the trim. And we have two interior doors. There is a bathroom door, the, the door that goes to the bathroom and there's also a door that goes to the bedroom. So we know we have two interior doors and then we also have a, um, here's another shot of the living room. Here is the kitchen. But in this particular, here's the bedroom. We know there is a sliding, as you can see, uh, it's hard to do this backwards. You can see there is a closet door here. So we know there's a closet door that needs to be painted as well. We're going to refinish the hardwood floors throughout. You can see there's hardwood floors. And in this particular photo, you may be able to see 
that there is some water damage right here at right in front of the dishwasher area so we may need to do some repair there as well so we'll need to do some repair on that floor and to refinish the hardwood floors and then we're going to replace all of the window coverings throughout the unit and what i did was i went through and took an inventory of how many windows there were and there are seven windows that we need to get new window coverings for so then i go through the kitchen let's go through here so here's the kitchen ah. so here's the kitchen it's not very large i mean it's a very small condo it's a one bedroom condo so here's the kitchen we know we're going to repaint the we are going to paint the kitchen cabinets and so therefore we need to choose what the color is going to be i'm going to add cabinet poles to there we're replacing the appliances there's a gas range it is a freestanding range we have the option obviously to either put in a freestanding or a slide in range and then we're going to replace the um microwave hood and then we need to add a refrigerator and it looks like it's probably going to fit a 30 no larger than a 32 inch we'll need to take measurements to confirm all of that once we actually have access to the property and then um it's a very very small sink it is a top mount sink so that means we don't have to remove the countertops to replace that sink if we choose to do so which is really nice most likely we'll be replacing that faucet because that looks like a very cheap faucet um, and that's an inexpensive replacement and an expensive upgrade so there's the kitchen and then what you want to do also is count how many cabinets you have so you know exactly how many pools you'll need um, because we're replacing that then we have let's see here here is the bathroom so here is the vanity and the vanity looks like it's in pretty good condition. Um, I don't know what the interior of that looks like. We'll have to know. We'll have to make that assessment once we actually gain access to the property and see. Um, but it looks like we may be able to just paint that cabinet and um, keep it. And I'm not a fan of that countertop. It's not horrible. I don't know what the condition of that sink is. You cannot tell from the photo. So if it's in good condition and it's something that we can work with possibly to save money, you can keep the countertop, keep the sink, and then maybe just replace the faucet. Um, definitely, I would probably replace that sheet mirror with a framed mirror. It just looks a little more finished and a little more elevated. And then replace that bathroom light. Um, so those are the things that you'd want to do it looks like there's no place to put a hand towel so I would put a towel ring there maybe replace the tissue holder so that that matches so all the hardware matches um, and then if you look here we have the bathtub area and um, we are going to actually remove the bathtub altogether and make it a walk-in shower now this is a top floor unit of a building so there is another unit below us so there's may, probably not going to be enough room to actually do a full walk-in shower where there is no curb but we will be able to do the lowest curb possible because this is going to be a unit for someone who's a little more elderly and does not want to have to step into a bathroom area um, so that's something important to keep in mind so we are going to then replace as you can see there is a towel bar here don't need the towel bar very inefficient we're going to add two rope hooks and then um, possibly replace the toilet have no idea what the condition of that toilet is again we don't have access to the property yet as soon as we do we'll make that assessment and that is on the list of um, things to determine so based on what we just did we walked through the room we outlined everything right then the next thing you're going to want to do is then create a shopping list um, and just like I had talked about earlier we know that there are seven windows right so we're gonna need window coverings and so therefore we're gonna have to measure those windows and know what those dimensions are so we could go source them and then purchase them um, we knew we needed 18 cabinet pulls for the kitchen so there's that you need, we have a gas range again you can either put in a freestanding which means that there is the, um, the the dials and all the controls are on the back. You can see where it's raised or slide in, which means that you do not have it, have that back. All the controls are in the front. You'll see more of a backsplash if you had a backsplash. 
there's a microwave hood. There is a refrigerator that needs to be purchased. Um, we'll need to measure that opening so we know exactly what that width is, what's the maximum width. Um, and then in the bathroom, we knew we needed five pulls if we're using that existing vanity. Um, possibly a sink, a faucet, countertop, towel ring, tissue holder. We needed two robe hooks, um, a vanity light, and that particular vanity looks like it's 36 inches wide, so you know that your vanity light cannot be any bigger than that. Um, a toilet, then you're gonna need floor tile and grout. You're gonna measure the floor space so you know exactly how much flooring tile you're gonna need. And then there's gonna be the shower tile and grout, and then the shower floor, so your shower pan area. If that's gonna be different from the shower floor, then you're gonna need to know what those dimensions are. And then Schluter would give you a nice finished edge um, in your shower. And then of course your shower system, which is like your shower head and your handheld shower devices. Um, you'll need a valve and a diverter and then a trim kit. You need a shower drain and then you're gonna need the shower door. So once everything is tiled and it is ready for um, the finishing part, then you would have a tile, I'm sorry, a shower, a glass company come and measure and then they would build you a custom shower door. Or if you're buying off the rack, same thing, you would then know what your, your dimensions are, your width, and then you would purchase that and have that installed. So once you have your shopping list, then you're also going to create a list of all the trades that are gonna be needed for your particular project, right? So in this particular case, we know we need a painter because we're painting all of the interior. We are going to need a hardwood floor refinisher, um, somebody who can do repairs and do the refinishing because the hardwood floor is most, for the most part in, in good condition, um, but there is some repair that needs to be done. We're gonna need a contractor or a handyman, depending on who you choose, and it may be you, maybe you're a DIY person and you're gonna do this yourself. Um, but you do need somebody who is going to be able to do all of the work for you, everything that we've outlined. And then if the contractor or the handyman is not a tile setter, you'll need a tile setter. Now that is gonna be the most challenging. Not everybody is good at doing tile. It is not an easy DIY. It, there, this is an art, and I think people fail to understand this, and that's why they don't love the end result of their bathroom, because the finishing touches really make a di big difference. You can be as messy as you want to be, I'm not saying that you should be, but you can be as messy as you want to be behind the scenes, behind the walls. Nobody's going to see that, but the tile is very, very important. If it's not level, if your grout lines are not even, if you do shoddy work, it's so apparent, and I have seen so much crappy work in terms of tile over the years, I've been obsessive. Like everywhere I go, if I'm in a hotel, if I'm in, in somebody's house, anywhere, I'm in the tile, I'm inspecting, and I'm feeling to see if things are level, I'm checking grout lines, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. It really is, but it, those are those things that make such a big difference in terms of how the overall um, project is going to look because everything you can choose the most beautiful material and I actually was um, at a property recently that was for sale and I tell you I told a realtor you know that stager and the photographer they deserve an award because they made that property look so good and they actually chose some pretty nice material but unfortunately the workmanship was so bad that as soon as you walked in you noticed all of the flaws and that is the problem and even with the staging and of course I'm the exception not necessarily the rule uh, uh, I just zone in on all those things that are imperfect unfortunately but the tile work was so bad the baseboard was not even on the floor so that shows you that the, the the floor was not level there were so many things that were not good um, and it's a waste of money and it, it's really a turnoff actually if you're gonna spend all this somebody spent the time to do the renovation and then they're trying to sell it for top dollar which they're not going to get I'm just gonna be real about that and then you see how bad the work is um, it just it's not something you want to live with on a day-to-day -day basis especially if this is going to be your home so there's that 
So we started with, like I said, we're going to walk through room by room and we're going to outline everything that needs to be done. That was first. Then we're going to create a shopping list, which I walked you through. And then we're going to create a list of the trades that are needed. And then with that information, the shopping list and the trades, you're going to then create a preliminary budget. So you're going to take that list and you're going to research how much those items are going to cost. And it's very simple to do. It's 2019. We have the internet. We have Amazon. We have online retailers. Um, so if you're looking for knobs and pulls, you would just do a search. You would find a knob and pull that you like and you figure out how much it is. If it's $3 a pull and you need to have 18 of those, then you know exactly how much that's going to be. I'm not going to try and do math right now. Um, if, they, if you need five for your bathroom, I could do that. Five times three is 15. So, you know, so, you know, it's $15 plus tax plus possible shipping, right? So you estimate how much everything's going to cost. You know, you're going to need a gas range. If it's a white one, if it's a black one, if it's a stainless steel one, you can look online and find, you know, even if you're, I, I personally don't recommend going through the big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's for your appliances. I personally would recommend that you go to an appliance dealer because they're a lot more well versed and they have better customer service. I've just not had really good luck with um, buying appliances from those big box stores because they they third party everything. So when if you have a problem, you can never reach someone to help you. So that is the reason. Big tip right there. But you can find out how much a gas range costs. You know, they can run anywhere from on sale somewhere in the four hundred dollar range all the way up to a couple of thousand dollars. It really depends on what kind of bells and whistles you're looking for, right? So that's what you're going to do is you're going to go through your shopping list and you're going to research how much all of those items are. I would put it on a spreadsheet, so and then you can itemize it all, and it, it makes it very very easy for you to figure out how much your materials are going to be. And then you're going to do the same for your trades. So you're going to get bids from your painter. You're going to get bids from your tile person. You're going to get bids from your contractor as to how much your project is going to cost. And what you also want to know is what materials are they including in their pricing? So for the most part, painters usually include not only their labor, but also materials, which is going to be the paint for your rooms. Um, your tile setter, he's probably going to not include the tile because you're going to provide the tile, which makes sense, but he'll probably um, include like the mortar and all of the things that he needs to use. You'll have to get the grout and you'll need to get the tile, but he'll provide everything else. So that includes like cement board and things like that too. Um, because you as a layperson don't know what those materials are. So it makes sense for the professional to include that in their bid. And then from there, and a lot of times um, this next step people do in advance, and that's fine. There's no right or wrong in terms of that. But after you have all this information, you're going to want to create a design plan, right? And this is going to also help you with sourcing the materials that you want for your particular project. So you could go online and get lots of um, inspiration from various sources. You know, Pinterest is a big one. Um, you might want to use House. I think Pinterest is much easier. You can create um, idea boards and then create one specifically for your bathroom, one specifically for your kitchen, one for your living room, different areas throughout your house. <clears throat> And that way, as you're pinning these photos into these boards, you're going to start seeing a pattern of what it is that you like, whether it be color schemes, whether it's a specific style. And it also makes it easier for you to then explain to your contractor what it is that you're looking to do. And then they, because having the visual makes it so much easier to tell a story, right? You know, when you're when you're just explaining it, you may not know exactly what the terminology is. You may not know exactly um, the best way to describe something. But if you show a picture, it makes it so much simpler. So that's what you're going to do next is you're going to create that design plan. So from there, um, you're going to want to then work with your contractors on um, creating a construction calendar. Right. So 
I'm going to share with you something to make it easy. If all of the things that I'm telling you seems a little bit overwhelming, it's not. So I've been doing this for over 16 years. A lot of this is fairly second nature to me now, but I created the renovation planner recently to make it super duper easy. So all the things that I was telling you about earlier, I have included in this planner. Um, I talk about the secrets to a successful renovation that talks about all the things that you need to do to have a successful renovation. Um, and then I have various checklists throughout this particular um, journal, um, a home renovation planning checklist. It outlines everything that you need to do before you get started, why you should have certain people as part of it, what knowing what your priorities are, and then reminders throughout the process of what should be done. Because I think a lot of times people either don't know or they forget and things fall through the cracks, right? So for instance, what should you do before demo day? There's a whole checklist here of things that you need to do. How to prepare for your home renovation. There's a whole checklist of things that need to be done. What to expect after demo day, and then also the last week of construction what you should be doing. And then I also include in here a labor and materials breakdown of every room in the house. So as I walked you through what you should be looking for, sometimes it might make sense. Sometimes it may be very simple for you, but a lot of times people don't necessarily know or they forget that, oh, I wanted to add this um, and nobody reminded you or you forgot to, it didn't cross your mind at that particular time and so you forget but I have included everything in here. So for instance, here we have labor, who are all the different people, the exterior of your house, the interior of your house, what to look for, everything in your kitchen and your bathroom. Sorry, here we go. This is marked up because this is my, my um, pre-print one. Here is also, I have gone through and created a pre-renovation assessment of every single room in your house from the exterior to the interior, you know, if you are replacing, if you are um, just repairing something, if you are um, all the different choices. So for instance, on the interior here, we have um, a stove. You might have a 30 inch wide, you might have a 36 inch wide. We're gonna have either gas or electric. Um, do you want stainless steel, black or white or other? There are other beautiful color choices now available. But this walks you through and makes you think about everything that might need to be done in each of the spaces so that you don't forget any of it. Um, goes through the kitchens, goes through the bathrooms. Um, we also have little worksheets here to keep you um, on track. So trades at a glance vendors at a glance so you're not sifting through you know we've got post-it notes all over the place little pieces of paper notebooks where you wrote notes and then you like you can't find it afterwards because you're you've got little bits of information all over the place so we're gonna have it all in one spot the thing that we did with writing down the shopping list and creating the um, preliminary budget here is a materials um, purchase tracker. So you're going to write down everything that you purchased, when you ordered it, who you ordered it from, when you're expecting delivery so that you could keep track of that. So things, you don't forget about things because the thing about a renovation is there's lots of moving parts, lots of things happening all at the same time. So it's easy to forget if this is not something that you think about every single day. Um, another thing is a paint color chart, right? How many times do you have like multiple paint colors throughout your house and you have no idea what color is what and where. And then when it comes time to having to um, repaint or do touch up paint, uh, it's, a, it's a struggle, right? You're digging through your garage trying to figure out which paint goes where. Um, so then the next thing, as I mentioned earlier, is you're gonna work with your trade to create a construction calendar. So this is what I did and I'm gonna show you. So here is a monthly spread of the construction calendar and it is fillable so you can start at any time so I'll show you for example this is the one I'm doing for the condo makeover right 
I wish I could show you on a screen. I don't know how to do that. So here's the construction calendar. We're doing it for March. This was the condo makeover. So I show you here that we actually bought the condo on this date. This was on the 14th, okay? And we're hoping that we're gonna receive the deed by this date, which is next Friday, because they were we were told about two weeks to receive the deed. So here I wrote notes, and I'm just gonna read these to you. Um, I just wrote a note that we should be receiving the deed in one to two weeks. What I wanna do is call the HOA to get keys to the building. Because it is a foreclosure situation, it's not like you're gonna be handed a set of keys, just like in a regular transaction. Uh, we also need to source a locksmith to open up the door because we don't have access. Um, we need to order a new lock um, for the door. And then we're going to um, create a renovation plan and a preliminary budget. That's Those are the things that we need to do right now before we even get the keys, right? And then I also have down here questions that I have for the HOA, and I'll go through that a little bit more in depth on the weekly spread. And then here is April. So as I mentioned to you earlier, we are trying to do a move-in date of the first week of May, um, or that first weekend of May. So between now and then, there's a lot of things that need to happen in order for us to be able to accomplish that. So um, just very preliminary, I wrote down all the stuff that needed to be done. So here um, on, the, on the first, I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to get the HOA key, we're gonna have the locksmith on site, and then we're going to, what does that say? Do measurements. And then here, that very first week, because we don't know exactly when we're gonna have access. Uh, I'm just guesstimating at this point, so that's the thing. This is a living, breathing document. As things are happening and as things are changing, you're gonna update that. So what is really nice is if you put it on paper and then put it into a Google Calendar, you can move things around digitally as well. So this first week, we're gonna be sourcing and ordering materials. So as soon as we have measurements, we'll be able to um, order those materials. I'm thinking that we're going to do paint that next week and it won't take the whole week because it's a small place, but just putting it in there. And then that third week is when we're going to do demo of the bathroom and we're going to do rough plumbing and framing on this first day, which is Monday. Um, and then we're going to be tiling and then we're going to be installing the finishes. It's actually a very, very quick turnaround on that bathroom. I've already spoken with my contractor. Um, and because this property is a little bit further away, he does not want to drag it out. He wants to get it done as quickly as possible, which I am totally down with. And then I make a note to myself. There's a notes line here that you want to schedule for a shower door measurement as soon as we know that all the tile is done around that opening, right? And then... Here on this following week, we're gonna do refinishing of the floors and then nobody can go in because you need time for that flooring to cure. Um, and then we're going to have appliances delivered on this last week and we're gonna do house cleaning, which is also gonna include window cleaning, and then we're doing move in. So we have these things temporarily scheduled. It's not set in stone, like I said. It is something that is going to change as things change and as we have more definitive information about the property. So that is the monthly overview. And in the renovation calendar, each planner comes with three monthly spreads. Generally speaking, most projects are gonna be about three months long. And if you need it more, then you can get another planner. Um, then the next thing is each week, there is a weekly overview. So this is the weekly overview. It has days, spots for each day of the week. Um, you can put what date, it, what week it is, week one, and then what the dates are. And then on this side, we're going to talk about what questions and issues and concerns you have. This is where you're going to make notes, what's on deck for the next week, and then um, and any notes that you have for yourself. And you could do this then for the week, and I'll show you, for instance, for this particular week, for that condo I have here, this was for this week. Monday, yesterday, find info on the HOA, which I was able to do. Uh, I was doing research on who that HOA was. Couldn't find it anywhere, found it from the realtor. And then create a rental plan and a preliminary budget. So um, we were talking about the next thing that I'm gonna do is sourcing the locksmith, um, finding out what the cost is to unlock, installing a new lock, and then I'm gonna source a new lock for the property. Um, and then I, I, these are just examples of things I'm going to do. And there's not a whole lot I can do this week because we don't have access yet. 
Um, so questions and issues and concerns. In that area, I put down that I'm going to be asking the HOA what the rules are for doing work in the building. HOAs tend to have, it's a condo building, so they tend to have a lot of rules and regulations. So I, I got to figure out what that is. Also, what are their rules for deliveries, right? Because we're going to be moving in and we're going to have appliances delivered. Um, do they have specific rules about that? Do we need to reserve the elevator? Sometimes these buildings are very particular. Um, there's specific times that you're able to do that. You can't just come and go as you want, like in a house. Um, so we need to figure out that. And then there's an area here for what's on deck for the next week. And in this particular case, my question is when are we receiving the deed by the end of the week? And then you have a space here to write it in your notes. And then you're going to have daily sheets. So one for each day of the week, Monday through Friday. And you're going to write down, there's a space here for the a.m. and the p.m. So as work starts to happen, I'll know like um, contractor, uh, arriving at 9 a.m. You can write that down. If you're doing an inspection at 1 p.m., you write that down here. If you are meeting with a trade at a particular time, you could put those in the calendar in this a.m. p.m. section. On this other side, you have people that you need to call and email today, and then you can have their name, and you're going to have their phone number or email that you can write down, and then you could check it off when you're done. This way you don't forget things, because a lot of times I'm sure – it happens to you because it happens to me all the time. I need to do something. You think about it. If I do not write it down right that second, it just disappears. And so I'm trying to help you create systems so that that does not happen. And then here is where you're going to have things that you want to follow up on, right? So maybe you made a phone call or maybe you ordered something and this is a good part, good spot to write down that you ordered tile and it's expected to arrive on a specific date. Right, that way you are keeping track of everything that's happening. So basically, in the renovation planner, you're gonna have three monthly spreads on the calendar that you can fill in. You're gonna have 13 weeks of the weekly calendars and, um, and daily calendars. That way you have a spot to write everything down. And like I said, a lot of times if you're just doing a minor renovation, it should not be that long. So three months is a good starting point. If you need to move on and you enjoy using the renovation planner, I would highly recommend that that is something that you do. Something I included at the very end of the calendar, so that 12th week, which is or the th right before the 13th week, which is your final week, um, based on what's available in this planner, <clears throat> we have a punch list form. And the punch list form is where you're going to go through the property at the very end and you're going to figure out what all still needs to be done. It's going to be um, you walk through your exterior, figure out, you know, let's just say um, you notice that there is a touch of paint that needs to be done on the porch. And who's that who is that person that's responsible for that? And then when is that due date? Right. And I do this at the very end because this is when you're finalizing all those little things um, in the living room, in the kitchen, in the family room. We're going to go through it's outlined room by room here. That way you can make a list of everything that you notice that needs to be done. So if there is a poll that's missing, that's something that you could address. If there was a piece of hardware that wasn't installed, you could write that down. So that's how it's going to make it super easy for you to keep track of everything that's happening in your project. So this is my trial run. And what we're doing right now, all the renovation planners are available for pre-order. Um, the actual renovation planner is going to be a vegan leather cover with a debossed logo on there I'm excited it's gonna look super nice but it's not gonna be available until May so in the meantime for everybody who pre-orders it you will get a um, initial run which is a paper copy like this spiral bound with a one-month calendar in there to get you started and that is just as a bonus for um, supporting me right now and um, ordering before we're actually ready with the physical product um, and 
we are doing a free ship option. So if you use the code free ship, you will get free shipping both on the um, on the initial um, planner and then also the the actual planner when the physical planner when it's ready when it's out of production. So that is um, available to you. I will pop that into the comments below. If you guys have any questions, I am going to be doing a complete walkthrough of how to use this renovation planner. We're going to have it the video available on the site and that's at therenovationplanner.com. Um, we also have a digital upgrade. I thought I was going to be able to share my screen with you. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do that. I love a physical planner because you, when you write something down, there is something that connects your brain to your hand when you're writing it and it just makes you remember things. And also, this is small enough. It's going to be an A5 size. Uh, that you could pop it in your bag. Guys can carry it around. It's not going to be super feminine. It's going to be um, uh, universally appealing. You can carry it around with you. And that way, if you have, if, as you're out and about, you're sourcing for things, you're talking to people, you're able to look up information very quickly. The digital planner is going to be, I call it this digital sidekick. It's the partner to it. So as long as you have Wi-Fi, you will be able to access it. And again, you will be able to connect to photographs and um, any, if you saved links to product, products when you're out and about, it, you're going to be able to pull that up no matter where you are. So it makes it very, very easy. So again, the renovation planner is currently available for pre-order at therenovationplanner.com. Lots of information, all the information that you need to know about the planner is on that website. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or um, you can find me here on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram at The Renovation Planner and I would be happy to answer that for you. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and sticking with the technical difficulties and I look forward to sharing more renovation tips with you in the future. Have a great day.